Yes, our study this afternoon is going to be on Hosea chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, if possible. Here, we are going to continue with our exposition on the book of Hosea, whereby we are going to look at Israel, the ten tribes, which were designated by the name Ephraim. And that verse, or those verses, says in English, verse 1, when Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding, all of it the work of the craftsmen, they say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. So it is the same. If a maripo, nena, paripo na tetemeko, aridi to kuza, katika Israel, akina aripo kosa, katika baari, arikufa. Nasasa, wanasi de kufanya dami, na omeji, fanyizia, sanamu kwa feda yao, nam, sanamu kwa kadiri ya akiri zao, zote pia ni kazi ya mafundi, na uzi, taja hivi, Yes. Here, Hosea is narrating the history of the ten tribes because, of, as you have seen from the exposition of the book of Hosea, Throughout, we have been dealing with these ten tribes. And in fact, they are about to go to captivity because God is going to allow them to be taken captive by the Assyrians. So here, Hosea is trying to describe what type of people this Israel were before they reached to the point where they were at that time. That's why he is saying that these people, when they were young, Ephraim spake trembling. Not that he was trembling because of fear. In any case, he was a good warrior. If you read the, the, the church history of these ten tribes, of Ephraim, Ephraim himself as a tribe, because you remember they were all divided into ten tribes. And Ephraim here, I have told you, when the scriptures speak of Ephraim, it speaks of the ten tribes because all the leadership of Jeroboam himself, who led these people unto rebellion, was Ephraimite, Jeroboam himself. So these ten tribes, they were noted by the name Ephraim. And these people, even when they were a tribe, when the division was done in the land of Canaan, Ephraim 
was known to be a warrior because as as the ten tribe they they used to work as the house of Israel so Ephraim if you can remember was the young son of who Joseph and you remember Manasseh was the elder and Ephraim was the younger they were the sons of Joseph but when Jacob was blessing them when Joseph brought those two sons to be blessed by his father Jacob you remember in Egypt is Joseph wanted Manasseh to be blessed as the firstborn because he was elder but he brought those children in with the right in the right position whereby Jacob would have blessed them the right hand on top of who Manasseh and the left hand on top of uh, Ephraim but when Jacob was about to bless them he crossed their ha- the hands in fact even to the point that Joseph was about to tell him that's not the way but he said i know so he blessed Ephraim as the firstborn instead of who Manasseh so that was a blessing whereby you will find that even when the nation of Israel is going to be formed the 10th tribe the Ephraim is going to be the leader he is going to have to possess as if he is the sole leader of this 10th tribe that's why uh, the 10th tribe are known by the name Ephraim that means when it comes to the fame of this world as concerning the nation of Israel if Ephraim was more blessed out of the 10th tribe than the rest though when you come to Judah Judah was more blessed in the two tribes because Christ was going to come through the line of Judah but as far as this world is concerned Ephraim was more blessed you can see Jeroboam is going to lead, to lead 10 tribes and Rehoboam is going to lead two tri- two tribes so you can see Jeroboam had the major the majority so that's why here uh Hosea is said he spoke when he spoke trebly that means he he had that courage of serving in that nation so he spoke trebly because of his courageousness and people could hear what Ephraim was saying let us first of all read judges 8 1 and 2 read it in kiswahili inasema basi watu wa Ephraim wakamwambia kwa nini wewe kututendea sisi kama haya hata usituite hapo ulipokwenda kupigana na midi midiani na waka teta naye sana lakini akawaambia je mimi nimefanya nini sasa kama mlivyofanya nyinyi hayo mas, hayo masazo ya zabibu za Ephraim si mema kuliko mavuno ya Ebiezer yes and men of Ephraim said unto him why has thou served as thus that thou called us not when thou wentest to fight with the midianite you know they were courageous there was a there was a war 
they are complaining. Why didn't you call us? And they did chide with him. And he said unto them, What have I done now in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of the Abiezer? So here, all what I want to, you want to see is that Ephraim was known and in fact, in any war, he was supposed to be there. Where there is war. If you didn't call them, that's why they are complaining. Why didn't you call us? You see, we want to see the, the, the courageousness that Ephraim had. He spoke trebly because he wanted to serve in that house of God in whatever way was possible. That's why yani, they are saying. Uh, he exalted himself in Israel. That means Ephraim was more exalted in Israel than any other person. You know, when you say he spoke trembling, when a leader when a leader is known, or when a, when a certain family is known for leadership, or there are some people in a country who have that quality of leadership, that when he speaks, people know that if so-and-so has spoken, things are going to be done. So he spoke terribly because he, he knew whatever he was saying, was going to and was going to be. So Jeroboam was of the tribe of Ephraim. You all know that, and I have told you. Here is as if the Holy Ghost should say, "There is a great change now in Ephraim. He is not now as he was, nor likely to continue so. Why? You know." When we come to the nation of Israel, as a nation of Israel, the nation of Israel was a theocracy. And when you say a theocracy, it means it was a church, it was a nation, as well as a church. A church. Any leader in, his, in, the, in the nation of Israel, because it was a church, he was counted as if he was representing Christ, the king. Because Christ is the king of Israel. Christ is the king of the spiritual Israel. When we say spiritual Israel, we mean each and every person who is born again. And each and every person who is born again in Christ Jesus, and truly he knows that he's a son of God, in fact, when it comes to the word of God, he speaks boldly. He trembles because of the word of God. Because he knows that is the word of God. He wants to serve God. That's what, that's, that's, that's what here the Holy Spirit is, is trying to say. That when Ephraim spoke, because he was a king in Israel, he spoke trembly. Because of the courageousness of serving. Because he wanted to serve. So he exalted himself. Let us read Jeremiah 9.14. Maybe it can open us. Our, it can open our eyes and see exactly what maybe it means. So here in Jeremiah 9.14 it says, Uh, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after Berlin, which their father taught them. So here, uh, I want us to see. Let us read that verse again. Hosea 13.1. Maybe we can get that point very clearly. Hosea 8.1. Sorry, Hosea 13.1. What does it actually say? Let us repeat it again. Ephraim alipo nena, walikuwa na tetemeko. 
alijitukuza katika Israeli lakini alipokosa katika Baali alikufa So here he exalted himself What does that mean Ephraim that is Jeroboam As I've said he was a king and a king for that matter represented or was a type of Christ I've told you that but there's a point I want you to see here that though Jeroboam was a type of Christ instead of exalting our Lord Jesus Christ he exalted himself yes. himself he exalted himself in fact you remember if you read that church history you'll see that in fact when he rebelled from the 12 tribe when he went at Bethel he built a temple there and at Dan all this effort was to build the church of God though he was exalting himself because he was he was overtaken by the spirit of this world so he never worshiped as it as it is supposed to be worshiped or as it was given by God only the worship of god was to be done at where at jeru at jerusalem though even where he built those temple he was after building the kingdom of god though in actual sense he was exalting himself so in this matter when he was exalting himself he every person in that nation or among those ten tribes when he talked he talked trembling meaning is as if all what he was doing was in line with the teaching of god and every person was to accept what jeroboam was teaching or what he was saying even those temple remember no one could cross from the ten tribe when they separated to go and worship at jerusalem even to the point that the levites had all of them had to shift to go on the side of jerusalem because they saw that the line which jeroboam was following was not the right way that god had given in his worship so when ephraim talked he talked terribly because he was he had a commanding voice and each and every person was uh, he, or he was feared by each and every person and in fact he was so courageous with what he was doing because he and he never knew anything else he knew he was doing the right thing but then though he was Uh, he, he talked terribly because of the zeal he had of God. There's one thing he did. Instead of worshiping the God of Israel, he set the Baal worship. The Baal worship, it is a god of his own imagination. It was a god of his own imagination, not that god who was the god of moses who was taught in the scripture so that's why the bible says in chapter 914 but have walked after the imagination of their own heart and after balin after their idols so the ten tribe were the first to follow the bar worship after the idol worship though he spoke trembling because of the seed of god 
but he misdirected the people of Israel and to Baal worship. What does that mean? It means this way, that today you will find we have preachers, we have pastors, we have teachers in, in this generation. But some of them, they speak trembling that they are truly teaching the word of God. That every person who is in that church, in fact, feel as if this truly is a man of God and is said by God to teach the truth, the truth. Many speak trembling from their voices. You can hear as if they are yani, how the zeal they have for God. You have, you have all heard that. Even some others even change their voices. They speak terribly. They have, you know, if you don't know the truth, if you listen to them, so that's what we are told about Yani uh, uh, Ephraim. When he spoke, he spoke trembling. But in, your, but in doing that, he led these people astray. And you can, you can imagine he had the bigger share because out of 12 tribes, he had taken 10. So the majority of Israel followed who? Ephraim. Because he could speak with a lot of with a big voice, he could be feared by people. He had a lot of zeal in the word of God. So people thought that Jeroboam or Ephraim is the one who was to take them to the next level to heaven. But he led them astray, astray. So when he offended in Ibar, because that's after he spoke trembling, but he offended in Baal worship. He offended in Baal worship. Let us read First King 16, that one. We read in Kiswahili. So you understand. Ikawa, ba, ikawa, kama ingelikuwa neno dogo tu, kuyaendea makosa ya yoroba, mwana wa nebati, aka mwana, Yezebeli binti etabali falwe wa wazidoni akaenda aka mtumikia bar aka msujudia yes and it came to pass as as if it had been a light thing to him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat that he took to wife Jezebel the daughter of Ediba, king of Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. You see, who is this? This is Asa. Because if you go to 29, he says, and in the that in the that eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. Ahab. And Ahab, and Ahab the son of Omri, reigned over Israel, Israel, that when you say Israel, that is Ephraimite, in Samaria, 20 and 2 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, above all that were before him. And that's happened to the Tony Asema, and it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ediba. So you can see, even Jezebel, you all know the history of Jezebel, aliolewa na Asa. Sorry, aliolewa na Ahab. I think it's, it is Ahab. Aliolewa na Ahab, the son of Omri. Na huyu, huyu, diyo atakuja kuwa nani? Jezebel. 
Na Jezebel was a Sidon, was a, a yani was a was a heathen. They worshiped Baal. Kwa hivyo una, unaona ukoo wote wa Jeroboam he directed people into the wrong direction in Baal worship. So that's a point I pronounce even how how Jezebel came about. The Jezebel you remember Jezebel what he did to who? To Elijah. Sasa. So what did he do when he and when he offended in Baal worship? Let us go to a verse again. Hosea 13:1. What happened? What happened? Ephraim alipo alipo nena palikuwa na tetemeko alijitukuza katika Israeli lakini alipokosa katika Baal alikufa. Yeah, he died. How did he die? You know when we say here he died, you might think that Ephraim he died a lot of all was over remember we all know that these 10 tribe were the sons of who jacob and jacob was a type of who christ, christ. so in every king who represented this nation of israel he represented a christ but now when Jeroboam uh, sinned in Baal worship, or when he offended in Baal, he died. That means to die here means he died uh, on the side of Christ. The spirit of Christ diminished. He died. His spirit even died. He had no longer that. He, he no longer worked the will of God anymore. Though he was, though the, had, though the tenth tribe of the nation of Israel was the church of God, but though they remained physically as the nation of Israel, as they, they represented the church at that time, but in actual sense, they were dead. In actual time, in actual fact, they were dead. That means even now, where is the church antichrist? Because we all represent the majority of those who go to church today, they represent the church of God or the nation of God. But then when our leader in the church, the preachers, pastors, referent, whoever they are, if they have offended in idol worship, when we say idol worship here, people will always, those who don't know the truth, they will think that idol here means uh, carved things like the Old Testament. No. The idol worship here means whenever people, yeah, people's mind is Wildly, wildly, that means they are after these worldly things. You'll find that people always think materialistically about the material wealth of this world. That is Baal worship. That is idol worship. Because you are after material. <laughs> Nima? Now, in fact, even that worship that you are doing unto God, you are after material of this world. You want riches. In fact, even the blessing that you think most in this world is this material wealth. That's, what, that's why you praise that God who can give you this material wealth. Well, that is Baal worship. You worship the Baal. That is a God of your imagination. You are worshipping a God of your imagination. And that one, we can get it in that verse that we have just read. It is Jeremiah what? 9 what? From 13, it says, 
And the Lord says, because they have forsaken my law, which I said before them, and have not obeyed my voice, neither walked therein, 14, but have walked after the imagination. Let's keep on it. But they have walked after the imagination of their own heart. And after Bali, which their fathers taught them. Which their fathers taught, taught them. That means this generation, which is about to go to captivity, they are going to captivity because it is a generation which has learned this Baal worship, and which is imagination, from who? For their parents. So don't expect Ama to fikirie that we are special. Because our leader in the church today, the church today is as corrupt as the world. We don't expect our children to have another church. What a father need. What a father yard ile munafanya. Because if in fact ata inafika pahari. Somebody akifugua kanisa, if he happened to die, anawachia nani? Mutoto yake. As if the church of God, ni kitu imekua inheritance, ni biashara. Hawa nae, walikuwa merithi kutoka kwa wazazi wao. Idol worship, Bali, the God of their own imagination. So when God says that he died, that is, the, the spirit of Christ disappeared in, the, in that church. It, it disappeared. And there were no more. Shasawa. So, Ephraim was terrible to all about him. But when he had offended in Baal, Baal, or in idol worship, his honor was taken from him, and he was fain to crow to, to everyone. And the wrath of God pursued and never left him, nor his family, nor the people, but they died and came to nothing. Did you come to the Lord? Yeah. When he offended, and that's what I've been telling you. But the moment people, they offer in bad worship, that is a God of their imagination. That God abide to the foundation katika kanisa is the God of prosperity. That is the God, of, that is bad worship. Prosperity, it is the spirit of this world. Utabarikiwa na mali ya dunia. So it is a God of imagination. Mungu abaye kazi yake ni kufanya nini? Ni kubariki na nini? Na mali ya dunia. Huyo ndiyo mungu abaye watu wanafanya nini? Wanaenda kupraise. That is bad worship. Ni, ni kwa sababu gani? Ni kwa sababu people are mistaken of the true worship. So they praise the things of this world. So wakati mtu wameona amebarikiwa na vitu ya dunia, ndiyo naeza even to give thanks to God. That is being mistaken. You cannot go and give thanks to God to go appear in the fry sana ni kwa sababu umenipatia gari ama nyumba. And yet, you are in darkness. Afadhali ato tuseme kitu manake, you are not telling God anything. Lakini utakunja kuwana, watu kwa sababu hawaelewi, wataeka kupraise a God ambaye anuapatia mari ya dunia, wanakaa mastarehe, lakini wana forget the true blessing. Sasa, ni mungu gani huyu? Ambaye, utaenda kumuambia asanti sana na vile mefrai, na anaona vile ujinga umekanda ni yako, that you cannot differentiate the true blessing and the false one. Ambaye ni amali ya hii dunia. Sasa, hapo usidanganywe, ata ukiene useme ya tunatua asanti, hiyo ni yako, God will not listen unto that. And that's why unasikia, even Ephraim, when he offended in Baal, he died. He was no more. That means, in fact, tunambiwa, uko wa Jeroboam, though, when you come to 
the riches at that time in Asamakana, the ten tribe under the leadership of Jeroboam was very rich the southern people among the two tribes hawangeona ule utajiri ulikuwa na Jeroboam every nation was admiring because you can remember yani the wisdom of Solomon Solomon had built that nation as a whole and it was very rich so you can imagine when they divided 2 and 10 nani aliyata na utajiri mwingi because the 10 had taken almost uh, all the country so when you come to riches they were very rich kwa hivyo walikuwa na pe walikuwa na mali but having gotten all this wealth Jeroboam offended in Baal worship the god of their own imagination Mungu apae kazi yake ni kubariki mali ya dunia Hiyo ndiyo naenda ku praise yeye but when it come to the true worship to be born again in Christ Jesus to know salvation the blessing of heaven hiyo nobody wanted to care about it sasa nobody hakuna mtu angetaka kujua and that's why they died meaning this lineage of Jeroboam it went that way until it became to nothing it died it became to nothing so even the church today the church we are seeing today and his story will tell it is going to go to nothing until the remnant of God who will preach the truth will come again and take over. But whenever a people has taken a direction of worldly prosperity, all the preachers, they are preaching prosperity of this world. They are after the, the riches of this world. The only blessing they know in the church is how to be blessed with this worldly good. The church has become materialistic. That is the end of that church. It will come to nothing. God is not going to work in that church anymore. It has happened in history. We are reading it. And we are part of this world. And it has happened in this world. Where God has departed from a church. No matter when Christ came in the nation of Israel, aliwaambia nyumba yenu imebaki uki ukiwa ni kusema he departed walibaki tu na kusema the temple the temple of god is this but christ departed from that temple and when he departed those that nation was destroyed completely people have never asked themselves how how did it happen that in this time that the nation of israel was being destroyed that is after christ in 70 ad we had all other nations all around very comfortable yani, serving this life but the nation of Israel was completely destroyed and it was the church what were you reason kwa nini ilikuja kumaliziwa na hii the nation ambayo walikuwa wana yani wana wa Israeli hawange kula pamoja na wao manake wao waliona ni watu wa maana sana that they could not even eat or even sit with the uncircumcised Gentile. Hawange kata fiti, hata wakalie pamoja. Hawa wengine wote walibaki. In fact, these people were taken captive. Una, you, you can remember the time of Titus when he came to, yani to the nation of Israel. He was a Roman. And they were taken captive. Jerusalem, the temple. Ile walikuwa nasema the temple of God, which was the church. It was destroyed down unto nothing up to today. And that happened. So I don't see why the Christian think that they can have all what they are doing and they think that they are taking people to heaven without reading the history.
let us see an example how these people they, they died and how they lost or they lost uh, the power. Let us read First King twenty one to four. Nasem Basi Ben Hadadi Farme wa Sham Aka Kusanya Yeshilake Lote Now Wali Puapo wa Farme Farangini na Wawili Pamoja Nai Na Farasi na Magari Aka Kwea Aka Ushuru Samaria Aka Upiga Vita. That is it. That is I understand here. This was a king of Assyria. Uh, he gathered other kings, that and two, and they besieged Samaria. Samaria was the capital city of the ten tribes. So, and they, they yani, vanquished that city. Verse 2. Verse 2 inasema, Akatuma wajumbe kwa aha mfalme wa Israel mjini, akawambia, Ndivyo asema vyo ben hahadari. Tatu. Feda yako na dahaku yako ni zangu mimi, na wakel, wakezo na wanao walio wema ni wangu. <laughs> you see now, how people are destroyed. This is a king. He is sending a message to the king of Israel. And they have, they have joined that two king to destroy these people. And he says in verse 3, Thy silver and thy gold is mine. Thy wives also and thy children, even the goodliest, are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine, and all that I have. Amefanya nini? Ameitikia. He has been taken. Hakuwa na nini? He died. He had no more power. And you remember, when Israel truly was a nation of God, they could not accept a defeat. A defeat. They could not. When Ephraim Yani talked trembling, Ephraim talked trembling, alikuwa nanguvu. You can remember even when where we read that ata vita wakati ya naito na ulisa, kwa nini hamuku nifanya nini? Kwa nini hamuku niambia? How can you, Yani, minasaje kwa, because they were courageous. Because they were protected by God. God was on their side. But you can see now, imefika pahali, king of Asina sema, and all silver, bibizenyu yo tata watatoyenyu, nuwangu sasa. Wakasema, na mna gani? Na iwa ivo. Because they feared, they had died. They had no more strength. The evil, the wrath of God, was against them. No one was there to do what? To defend them. They had denied the only their savior. And by denied Jesus Christ. So whenever a people wanaenda wanaabudu bali, wakati wanaabudu bali, wanasahau, you people, you are destroying yourself. Because the only protector ambaye kabisa anafanya muishi na, na muwe na mastarehe, you have forgotten him now. And you are going to be taken. Because the wrath of God is going to, going to be upon him. And no one will, will help you. And you know Jeroboam, you know Ahab, anakubali. Let it be, yani wacha waya na waya wako. Imagine, watu ambaye kabisa hawake kuwa defeated. So the same case is going to happen to the present generation. That's what is going to happen. The wrath of God is going to come unto our people. And they shall, not, they shall have no helper. Kwa nini Jeroboamu ata hageza, hagesema, wacha ni hite mungu. Umesikia pari ya kisema hivu? Kwa anasema, anaita the king of Israel, 
Nesisikia hapa. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king. Now who is his lord? The king of Assyria? Bona hakuita mungu. So he had lost hope with God. You know, wakati mungu amefika pali the wrath of God in Akuja sasa, the, the, the only Satan himself takes over. Na wakati ame takes over, ni kwa sababu he has been allowed, that's why uyu king of Assyria, he is boldly speaking. Because it's as if he, he, he has seen the weakness of these people. And he knows that the truth of these people are going to be mine now. So Satan, wakati na nyinyi muna watu wana offend, wakati mungu wana ondokea, hata Satan ya naona, ah watu mungu wafanya nini? Hame ondokea. Na wakati mungu wame ondoka, ujue Satan is given power to control the wrath. Hapo diyo binadamu hajajua. That's why tunambiwa Satan is the ruler of the darkness. That's why he comes here. And because he's a ruler of darkness, sasa, and he has taken over, God has allowed him to take over because nyinyi ambaye mulikuwa ni kanisa mume, 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 mume asa kuwashi bar, mume ingia yani the God of your own imagination. Hata hamutaki kujua. Sasa, mungu nae anawachiria the king of wrath, Satan, to take over. And you are helpless. Because nikumanisha, hata uwezi kata. Why? Ukiulizu wa kwa nini mufuwe janyesha, whether you like it or not, itafanya nini, itafanya nini, haita nyesha. Because, why? Because pahari mefika, you had all the chance, lakini umefail, mbaka imefika wapi? Imefika pari. So, unakuta, you are helpless. Jeroboam was helpless. They had a low and mean spirit, yielding to anything. And yet, and yet of a powerful, forward spirit, to be cruel over those that were under them. Look here. You know, they had a low and mean spirit, yielding to anything. They could yield to anything. Anything that could come in the... They could yield to anything. But in themselves, their country, they were cruel to one another. They were cruel to one another. Which means, you know, what one of the wakati that God, uh, the wrath of God, Satan is the king of darkness. Nana wachiliwa. What one of the wrath is going only to work one sided. Atirabda watu watakosa mfuwa peke yake, watu wakose wakutu wana hurricane, watu wakutu wasijui na hot, eh, snow, storms, all these things. That is the only thing that watu wanafikiri apana. This work in all the laws of nature. When you say in all the laws of nature, ni kumanisha, the spirit in the whole world itakuwa even, even governance itself, haitakuwa sawa. Even marriages, haitakuwa nini? Haitakuwa sawa. Ata watoto, hawatakuwa sawa. Yani, in effect, all sectors, all sectors, kila kitu unaona, haiendi vile inatakikana. Kuna mambo ambaye inafanyika watu hawaelewi. Ukiuliza watu saa hii, what about this generation? What about marriages? I happen to come with a certain man somewhere in a bus. I don't know what we are talking about. He, he told me, we have reached a point in a generation where when a man or woman marry, if they reach 
They accomplished 10 years together. That is a graduation. That is a graduation. Na ni kijana. Anambia hiyo itakuwa ina, ina unakani kama graduation. Watu wanaenda kufanya nini? Kuselebrate. Watu wamefanya nini? Wamefanya miaka kapi? Kumi. Pamoja hivi. Wamewana na wameprakana miaka kumi. Nikamuliza ni kwa nini? Akanyambia yale tunaona ni mambo mazito sana. So, ni nini? What has happened? It is because the spirit of Christ has diminished in all level. No level. In all level. Even that humility of a woman has gone. Hakuna hata mmoja atanyenyekea pale. It is God who, who, who enables that. Ni Mungu fanya nini? Ni Mungu ni Christ wanga na Said. That spirit of Christ ndio inafanya hata wanawake kutima bwana zao na hata kukaa to make a good society. But whenever the wrath of God has taken over because of bad preaching, that's why the wrath, a curse, because the wrath is a curse. It's not a blessing. Inaingia in a society. In all level of the society. Ukiangalia pande hii si mvua, ukiangalia pande ingine ni snowstorm, ukiangalia pande ingine ni hurricane, ukiangalia pande ingine watu wanauwa na ovyo ovyo. You know in all sectors inakuwa namna hiyo. And that's what watu wanagojea eh waone na hata bado tunayaona. Sasawa. So in this place the Lord was departed from them. And so their spirits were gone and they were as dead carcass which everyone could insult with impunity they were as dead carcass that mansion ambaye watu yani walikuwa naye ukiangalia kama wanaume that spirit of a man inaondoka inaondoka completely unakuta watu wanaitwa wanaume lakini ukiangalia that spirit of man ambaye ilikuwa ndani ya wanaume unakuta hakuna mwanamke mwanaume anakaa hata sio kama mwanamke he has he is as if he is dead a man unakuta hana even hataki any responsibility as a father wanaondokea wanaondokea kabisa at a man anafika pahali ukifikiria ati sasa atitomtesa na watoto uende hata yeye ukienda ndio anafanya nini ndio naona sasa amepata nini freedom anakaa hata shughulika that is to die yani in the spirit kuwa kabisa we are dead that that life ambaye watu walikuwa naye inaenda ikiisha completely in the society lakini watu hawaoni na watu hawaelewi wengine wanafikiri ati we can do this ati tubadilishe wengine wana, wanafikiri ati if we go traditional way to rule party tulikuwa ati sasa ndio tusaidie hakuna 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 ni kwa sababu gani sio ati kwa sababu tradition ndio imefanya watu waingie pale wameingia ma watoto haribika ma nini no it is a, it is us parent who has who have missed the way the way of prosperity the way of blessing true blessing hiyo ndio tumeondokea tukawa carried away by material of this world to lose the way kazi yetu ni kufikiria tu vile tutatajirika sasa swali ni je nyinyi basi tajirikeni materially but you have lost a generation hiyo ndio iko mali mtafanya nini Mutapata hiyo mali kama ni mawe mnataka mpate mawe hata korofa zinaenda sijui mia gapi na magari hali ya juu sana but you have lost a generation Nikumaanisha mmezaa watoto but they are dead If them da, died Hivyo nikumaanisha yeye akifa na watoto wake atawa 
Hata wao. That's why he is going to, to be nothing. Jeroboam na na hiyo familia yake unaona Ahab sijui ni wangapi kutoka kwa Jeroboam. Lakini ukisikia wakati anasikia Israel inakuja anasema hata anaita the king of Assyria my lord. Manake he, he, he is helpless. Ni mwanaume lakini he cannot do what? Hawezi kujikinga. Hawezi kujikinga. There was a time in fact people have never known why the 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 the, the Romans empire crumbled down. It was because men had become very weak. Wanaume walifika pali wakawa very weak. That men could not even serve in the army. Mwanaume kwenda kusimama kwa jeshi yakae ikawa ni ngumu sana. So the 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 the, the, the yani the wanaitwa barbarism. Those those tribes to ambaye zilikuwa baye hazijaendelea zika overtake and then they conquered the Roman Empire. Because the Roman Empire haikuwa na wanaume, wanaume walikuwa wamekaa kwa nyumba wakawa kama mayaji, wakawa wakawa kama wanawake. They had died. Wakawa kabisa kabisa they can they can never make yani a family. They cannot defend a family. They can do nothing. So if a king anaweza kuongea hivi, anaita another king my lord, do what you want with my wife and my children. Sasa hii inakubarisha nini? Eh? Eh? Ame sarenda. Na mwanaume kabisa kabisa anaweza kusema do what you want with my wife and my children. Inawezekana labda muue. Lakini you can hear what Ahab anasema. So when you hear the word of God anasema he died with his family. Nikumaanisha a king akiwa amefika pale na vijana wanaume walikuwa wapi? Nikumaanisha alikuwa anaona kabisa hana nini. Hana watoto hata yaani vijana wakusaidia nani? Wa kumkinga. He had seen that. He had seen that. And that's what is happening. Ukiangalia in this generation men are hard hit. Men are hard hit. But people have forgotten. Hawajui ni kwa nini? People have never known and I have told you time and time again. Why the king the, the pharaoh the king of Egypt had to do what? Had to kill all the the boy child. Watu wajui ni kwa nini? Lakini akabakisha nani? Wasicha? Wasichana. The boy child when you you yani you, you weaken the boy child the kingdom of God is gone. The kingdom of God is gone and Satan has taken all over. So wakati watu wanaona wakisema sasa wamama wa praise wa mama ati nini na wanaomba kuisha wanaisha they are forgetting that what is happening Satan is killing the boy cha the child barak anajua the kingdom of God cannot go on through the women it cannot hata wanawake wakisema sasa ati wanahubiri ati sasa kwa sababu wanaume wamekataa hiyo ni yao you cannot come and help God Mungu anaona kuliko wewe na uwezi kusema wewe ndio unasaidia yeye. God has allowed it to do to happen ni kwa sababu gani? Nyinyi mmekubali Satan the wrath ifanye nini ingi? Na hii wrath itaingia on all side. So whenever a man whenever a woman inakuwa sasa ndio kiongozi hiyo mambo that family ama that nation imefanya nini imeisha let us see because some things yani eh, ni ngumu sana kuzielewa hebu tusome isaya eh, 12 yes as for my people those were the, the children of Israel as for my people children are their oppressors and women rule over them oh my people They which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Kiswahili? Kiswahili nasema 
katika habari za watu wangu watoto ndio wanaowaonea na wanawake ndio wanaowatawala enyi watu wangu kwa kuongoza zao kwa kukoshesha kwa waiharibu njia ya mapito yako that is it so whenever men lose their direction that is the end of a nation whenever women and children ndio wasasa wanaona yani najua isa nataka kuambia wale ambao wanaona mmekubali watoto wawe wanafanya vile wanataka wao ndio wanataka vile vile wanataka ndio wanafanya wanao waone ndio wana decide vile watafanya so the father has no say in the house a boy can do what he want a child can do what he want ni kwa sababu gani wale waongozao ni nani ni wanawa why kwa nini nataka kusema hivyo ni kusema nataka kusema wakati wanawake wamepata mali wanashikana na watoto no. na watoto so mzee hakuna kitu anaweza sema tena so naye mzee kwa sababu ameijua na the spirit of weak yani yani amekufa he has died as a man sio kama tumeelewa na pale this man has a he has died as a man Hayezi ongea kama mwanaume sasa kwa sababu amekufa yeye kazi yake naye ni kuzikiza vile mama na watoto wanafanya nini? Anasema. Sasa akawaambiwa hao ndio wamefanya nini? Wamefanya kufanya nini? Mpote? Mpote. Wame hao ndio you know if you teach this generation ukwasa wa mama namna hiyo they cannot agree. Wengine wanasema hapana. Is as if wewe ndio umeandika hiyo jina. Yaani that word. Na Mungu ndio amesema that the moment women wanakuwa ndio wanaongoza ukiangalia the, the present generation mwanamke akipata mali mwanaume basi ameisha mwanaume hawezi kukana mwanamke hawezi kukana mwanaume ambaye hana pesa hata ataambia watoto hata watoto wanamdharau wana, wana, wana. na that's why unaona kuna watu wanakufa wengi that's why you see there are a lot of divorce so what is going to happen ndio nimemwambia the wrath of god when it comes it comes in all direct direction wao walifika pale wakaongozwa na wamama na watoto na wakaambiwa hao ndio wamefanya mwanguke na sio kupenda kwa hao wanaume it is because they have died as men walikuja wakawa sio watu hawawezi ku act kama wanaume tena ikiwa mwanaume anakojoa mpaka wakati atapatiwa pesa na mama yake ikiwa mwanaume amefika pahali hayes tafuta njia ya kusafavi kama mwanaume sasa that man has died in himself as a man ni vile tu anaonekana akitembea lakini he has died so it is an honor it is an honor to have respect when others when others sorry it is an honor to have respect from others when we speak to have what says received with reverence and respect that's what it is supposed to be it is a honor wakati wewe ukiwa mwanaume unaongea na unakuwa kabisa unakubaliwa with respect that's how it shows that you are a man but wakati unakuta kabisa that respect imeondoka na wewe mwenyewe umefika pahali umeikubali you have died umekufa kiroho na umekufa kama mwanaume that's what happened with Jeroboam sasa so we have seen sin will bring men's honor down dhambi but when he offended in Baal he died that one we have seen though there was a time that everyone reference god or if we reference to god and did much regard what they, they speak yet the falling to sin and wickedness it is just with god to bring their honor and esteem down to bring them into the dust and to make them vile and contemptible contemptible in the eyes of those that are that are before are before them sasawa so let us read job 12:21 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 job
Job 12:21 tuone kama itatusaidia. No, read instead Malak 2:9 which says Therefore those in the ministry sorry therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people so god can make you what base contemptible base before all men or the people so ili kwa sababu hiyo mimi nami nimewafanya nyinyi kuwa kitu cha kudharauliwa na unyonge mbele ya watu wote kama vile nyinyi msivyo sishika njia zangu bali umewapendelea watu katika sheria you see now kwa hivyo nini imefanya Mungu afanye nini awafanye watu ambaye nini watu wasiwa kuheshimika ni kwa sababu wamekataa kushika nini sheria za Mungu that's the only thing ambayo inafanya watu wasiwe watu wa kuheshimika na wakati tunasema watu wasiwe watu wa kuheshimika when you go to the society watashindwa unasema namna gani because wataona wala watu wote ambao wako na mali sisi wanaheshimika na watu wa kuheshimiwa na kwa kweli tunawaita waheshimiwa na wale wako kwa, kwa, kwa makanisa ambayo wanaongoza makanisa tunasema hawa ni they are the men of god sasa Mungu wakati anasema mimi nami nimewafanya msiwe watu wa kuheshimika anamaanisha nini ni kwa sababu kama tunaona watu ambao wamenawiri hivyo tutasemaje hawa watu si watu wa kuheshimika and yet wanafanya nini wanaheshimika so hapa inamaanisha nini inamaanisha uh, these people though that church or that nation though inaonekana kana kwamba pale ndani kuna watu wa kuheshimika lakini there is a curse going on inside ambaye it is driving that nation unto a halt ambaye itafika in a very short time there will come a time hawa watu wote walikuwa wanaonekana kama ni watu wa kuheshimika watakuja kuonekana sio vile walikuwa wanafanya nini wanaonekana because when these people are going to go to captivity the priest ambaye walikuwa wanaongoza katika hizo temple na makanisa walipata aibu kubwa sana the king the princess ambaye walikuwa wanaongoza hawa watu in that country hata wote walipata aibu kubwa sana why because all of them they were put into the same car yani basket but they are Syrians. Those who ambaye walikuwa wanaonekana watu wa maana ambaye walikuwa naambia watu mambo tuko sawa. Wote waliwekwa kikapu kimoja from the kids to the lowest. When they come to this generation, watu wanaanza kusema katika hii generation haiwezekani. Ni kwa sababu we have sciences na ile kitu tunatakiwa kufanya it is to have a good relationship with our neighbors ndio tusipigane vita vita in the, in the new testament in this generation hakuna pali na kujua lakini the curse ambayo inaweza ku strike a nation it can be of many method ambaye those who are going to feel wote wako na mali wasie na mali they are going to feel it wote wote watakuwa infected pamoja i'll give you an example juzi there was a flood in nigeria this flood in fact out of 47 states so juzi ni 47 na 40 yani 46 hapo 43 they were affected na ukiangalia wale watu zile nyumba zilikuwa yani submerged na magari it never selected waheshimiwa na nani na maskini in fact hata wale watu walipoteza ni nani matajiri matajiri because ukiwa wewe umekomboa nyumba for example ikuja kabisa ibomoroe na maji ama iwe flooded wewe utachukua nini 
Utachukua tu vitu vyako fanya nini? Wewe ndio utafute pahali nyingine, si ni kweli? What about the owner? Anaanza mjengo. The owner yeye ndiye ataumia sana. So wakati watu wanasema ati how God can dishonor the leaders even wale kabisa watu wanaona ni watu wa maana wanafikiri ati how can it happen but god wakati inakuwa pahali ya kuonesha watu kabisa amekasirika there is no waheshimiwa ama nani wasioheshimi wote wanakuwa kitu kimoja hawa wote walienda katika utumwa watoto wao nini wale walikuwa na mabibi there was no difference kama ni bibi ya mfalme kama ni mtoto wa mfalme wote waliwekwa kwa kikapu kimoja and they were all taken captive and they felt you remember kuna a king during the time of captivity of babylon ambaye alitolewa macho na watoto wake wote wakauao king zedekia sijui ni zedekia kama ni zedekia he suffered na there was nothing yani he could do wale wengine ambao walikuwa miapio na jeremaya wakati wale wataingia msikataye kwa kwenda mkubali manake the time has come for you to go to captivity kwa hiyo msifanye nini msikataye but the king anataka ku resist kidogo alingolewa mpaka macho so watu wakiuliza itakuwaje you know wale watu wako na mali those people who are rich in a nation wale wame nawili kwa katika maisha ya hapa na, na, na pale Wow, even this the, this word of God wakati inaongelewa wanga wanashindwa kwa nini kama ni ugojo gani itakuja mimi ya can even go to India Anafikiria yeye aki hata kama ni, ni nini he can go any hospital Sijui kama tunaelewana He has millions of money Lakini mliona just a, a simple example with coronavirus that hata wenye wako na mali haiko anafanya nini inachagua wengi walikuwa nakufa hata wakiwa na hiyo pesa hata kienda wapi hata kutoka nje ilikuwa ni nini ni shida so things can happen that the rich and the poor unakuta wote wanakuwa kikapu kimoja kwa hivyo wale ambaye wanaonekana ni watu wa maana wanafikiri ati sasa wao haiwezi happen kwa wao sasa hapo ndio tunasikia pale akisema Therefore have I also made you contemptible in Malak and base before all the people. Sasa hapo kwanza anaongelesha haongelei haongelesi mtu wa kawaida. Anaongelesha the rich the leaders. Therefore hiyo ndio imefanya ni wafanye watu kwa watu ambao si wa maana. Ni kwa sababu Mungu anataka wale ambao wanaonekana ni watu wa maana in the society Analeta mambo mpaka anaonesha nyinyi sio ki sio kitu Hapo palikuwa na priest ambaye walikuwa wanajifanya the men of god Why and you know by that time the war in Israel the, the more these people obeyed god the more they won all the war That was the history of the, of, of the nation of Israel Sindio kwa nini hawa ambao walikuwa wametengeneza hizi matempo in the northern Israel because there were priests there were revites ambao Jeroboam alikuwa ameweka pale why did they help that nation to defeat the enemies kwa nini hawakuwasaidia and yet Mungu alikuwa amesema namna gani mkifanya yale yote nataka na mwana jia zangu Hakuna kitu kinafanya nini? All these nations ambazo zimewasarau zime hazitafanya nini? Hazitawaguza. Why did these people lead them in that direction? Kwa nini hawakuambia o wasomee neno waambie this is the script inasema? Ni kwa sababu the leaders hao watu ambaye ni church leaders ambaye wanaongozwa na mambo ya dunia wao wenyewe wanaachana na sheria wao wenyewe sheria za Mungu wanaenda mambo zao they are not the protector of the people wanakuwa ni watu ambao kazi yao ni materials so 
hata wao they know that kabisa kabisa hawezi idea watu deep inside their the and their heart na kuambia wengi hawa unaona wana preach this the gospel of and prosperity wanajua ni pesa wanatafuta they know kwa hivyo naye ikifika pahali fulani watu wote wataangamia wote pamoja sasawa so we have seen corruption of worship cause god thus to withdraw from a people and make them to be as dead carcass because we have seen when Ephraim offended in Baal he died he became a carcass now when he became a carcass tunaambiwa namna gani let us read a verse tuone kama itatusaidia Matthew 24:28 soma inasema kwa kuwa popote ulipo mzoga ndipo watakapo kusanyika tai yes for wheresoever the carcass is there will the eagles be gathered together what is the purpose of this eagle is eagles na gather together to fanya nini zile mzoga yes kwa hivyo hivyo ni kumaanisha pahali watu kabisa wamkataa Mungu they, have, they become as dead they become as dead carcass so they will become the prey of those eagles kwa hivyo kumaanisha we are pahali popote this eagle represent the wrath of god pahali kitu imekufa hapo ndio these eagles watakana together hata ukitaka kujua pahali kuna msoka ama kuna carcass anywhere ama ngombe imekufia pahali kuna madege unaona inasukuka wapi inasukuka juu manake pale inajua kuna nini so eh, corruption of worship cause god does to withdraw from a people and make them to be as a dead carcass sasa when god's worship which is the life and safety of a place is corrupted and gone then come death nasikia when god's worship which is the life and safety of a place is corrupted and gone then cometh death wakati watu wame corrupt the worship of god don't expect anything else it is death death na hiyo kabisa kabisa it has happened in history and it is going to happen in future in our times and even in the future so when wicked men are the most active in evil yet when when yet then may they be under the sentence of death i repeat when wicked men are most active in evil yet then may they be under the sentence of death of yes of death when they seem to have the greatest power to do what they least yet then they may be as dead people it was here that point when they seem to have the greatest power to do what they least yet then then they be as dead a people unaweza kuta nataka kusema nini unaweza kuta uone watu kabisa they are very yani active in business kufanya kazi na vile wananawili wana katika maisha hapa duniani sasa wewe ukiangalia na macho ya mwili unaona kabisa yani ukiangalia hivi unaona development everywhere but those those development it is intermixed with corruption wizi kunyanganya wengine yani ni mambo mazito sana wewe unaona tu na macho unaona manyumba kubwa watu wanajenga lakini ukichunguza labda utakuja kuona ni corruption fulani imefanyika pahali so hapo ni kusema nini when they seem to, to have the greatest power to do what they least wakati wanaonekana wako na nguvu sana ya kufanya vile wanataka kulingana na tamaa zao yet then 
they may be as dead people lakini hiyo unaona kama ni development ama ni ni mambo mazuri sana inaendelea lakini hawa watu wamefanya nini wameku they are dead they are dead watu wa mwili hawezi kusikia haya wajue what what it means wakati inasemekana mnaonekana kabisa umeendelea sana kibiashara kimaendeleo ni nchi mabarabara mmejeka kila kitu mnafanya lakini when you come to the eyes of god you are dead you are dead nimekufa ni kwa sababu the spirit ambaye kabisa inaongoza is the spirit of this world the spirit of christ is god hakuna mtu anafikiria mwingine kuna watu kazi haja yao ni kuweka pesa kupata mali wengine wanaenda jaa mwingine hata hujui anatafuta ya kupeleka wapi na akipatiwa any, any seat in the government ni ya pole mali ile mshahara hata umempatia hiyo imtoshi yeye yeah, anataka tu kujua kama kuna pali kuna project nyingine pali apate pesa hii sasa amesahau hiyo anajua ni yake sasa hiyo sasa yeye yeah, ako na right yake corruption na, na iko kila pahali so these people they are dead they are dead spiritually they are dead so this Ephraim died why he seemed to be full of life and activity and vigor and thought to do what he least and to trample all other feet that would stand against that way of worship Uyu Jeroboam kama ungemuona akisema hakuna tena kwenda ku worship in Jerusalem. I built two temples here karibu na nyinyi. Hata hakuna haja hamtaenda pale. Na watu wakasema long live Jeroboam ni kwa sababu ume, yani umeleta kanisa karibu na sisi. He was very zealous. Hata akiongea hata watu wanauliza sasa tutaenda tutaenda huko pale kufanya nini? Kama our king ametujegea nyumba hapa karibu tu worship vile tunataka instead of going to Jerusalem lakini they don't know what it means spiritually inamaanisha kama watu wanaweza tegeneza a very simple way of worship badala ya kusubuka sana kutafuta ukweli wewe unakaa una tu uende ufundishwe tu tu send to get covers kamoja waambiwa na hilo ndilo leo la Mungu ende nyumbani kuna haja gani unakaa ati una study the word of god kutoka asubuhi mpaka jioni nini hiyo unatafuta sasa people like a nice way of religion wale walikubali na wakafurahia Jeroboam sana and in fact hata wakati alikuwa na okay the tripod manake yeye amerahisisha njia za kuabudu bora tu upeleke time kwa kanisa manake ukipeleka unafanya nini unabarikiwa so watu wamjui that this, the salvation cannot be bought with money pastors wame raisisha jia ya kwenda binguni na jia pesa ati watu wanafikiria tu kwenda kutoa tithe spare utoe offering upeleke pesa kanisani sasa wewe ndio umefanya nini so it is a nice way kwa hivyo mtu anasema afadhali atafute pesa aende ashindi akitafuta pesa apate pesa lakini yeye apeleke pesa kanisa manake akipeleka pesa kanisa Mungu anakula pesa na Mungu atafurahi na yeye kabisa kabisa atakuwa yani as child of god and he is going to heaven. Kwa hivyo salvation it has been made so easy by the preachers that wewe bora uwe na pesa na upeleke nini? Upeleke tithe na offerings. Upeleke pesa tatu. Offering, thanksgiving hizo zote. Kwa hivyo work hard wakati uko nje. Fanya kazi na bidii tafuta pesa bora ukija hapa sande ulete nini pesa wewe jia imefanya nini so men because they like money that is an easy way imefunguliwa ni kama jeroboam jeroboam aliwaambia hakuna haja kwenda jerusalem ni mbali sana i'm going to build a temple here na ingine hapa unaenda hapa karibu unaenda huko kufanya nini na hata mkienda ukupenda kwa bubu kama ni kondoo na chinjwa hata hapa tunachinja kondoo lakini mungu alikuwa anafanya nini amekataa lakini ni watu kwa sababu hawaelewi wakaguba wakaguba so the same thing is happening in this generation watu wametanganywa 
And this is a way of worship. Hakuna haja hata kustudy the word of God, no exposition. Hakuna maswali kanisani, hakuna nini, hakuna mtu anataka kujua even anything deeper about truth. Bora tu ile pastor amekuja kuweka mambo yake pale. Bas, wewe enda nyumbani. Si umetoa pesa. Gotea. Jina yako limefanya nini? Unaambiwa limeandikwa na lazima utaingia. Hiyo yote ni uongo. So ni ngumu sana yani kuingia kama kabisa wewe kabisa unafuata hawa watu ambao wanafundisha the gospel of prosperity wao hawataingia na wamesimama wapi mlangoni mlangoni hawataingia na wewe utafanya nini hautaingia ya hautaingia ni kwa sababu wame wame wamefunga mlango hawaingii na hawakubali wengine waingia kwa sababu wameleta a false doctrine false gospel kama Jeroboam vile alifanya hapa hawa wana wa Israeli hawakuingia mpaka at the end of the day he died everything died everything went to nothing so the same case is going to go to the same uh, generation this generation church which is antichrist amen, amen.